Happy Halloween! It's your favorite Marvel character, Blue Beetle. Everyone's favorite Marvel character. No, it's actually me, Adam, from Adam Does Movies, but we do love our Marvel superhero, Blue Beetle, who's definitely a Marvel character. You know who else is a Marvel character? Agatha, from Agatha All Along. And I watched the season finale last night, really, episodes eight and nine, and I'm gonna cover both of them right now in a spoiler-filled recrap video. Let's go. Listen, it was a little unfair to say re crap. I don't think this show is outright terrible. I do think it's kind of um, unnecessary and a little confusing as to what they're trying to do with the character and this show overall. Totally speaking, it was wildly all over the place with really corny, campy stuff, but then some serious dramatic elements mixed in. I wouldn't call it an outright dull watch though. It was just a meandering one. One that unfortunately focuses on a character that's incredibly unlikable. Catherine Hahn was great as Agatha in WandaVision, not so much here when she gets a little bit more free range. And I think the problem is it's really hard to humanize or sympathize with these villains on any level. And this character specifically just kind of sucks all across the board. She's a smart ass, but not in a funny way that's bringing people in. She's just horrible as in she goes around killing other witches for sport. She constantly lies and tricks people so that she can get what she wants. And really, she only does one redeeming thing throughout this entire series. Now, some will argue, well, yeah, she's a villain. Well, that, that's the whole point. Well, I don't need to watch her, and it's not fun to watch her. And most of the other people on this show aren't that great either. Outside of the one character who they killed off in the previous episode. So let's jump into this, and if you like the commentary, if you appreciate that I'm just not outright saying things suck or they're amazing 1 or 10, Maybe think of subscribing to the channel as I post honest and hopefully somewhat humorous reviews and videos and recaps every single week. We'd love to have you stick around. Special thank you to Tony from Hack the Movies. He provided me this costume a year or so back. It's gotten a lot of mileage. I appreciate that. Check out Hack the Movies on YouTube. He's a good guy. It's a good channel. This, this, this has to go. I, I just, this is hot as shit. You, you can't even imagine that. What I do for the craft is unparalleled. I was going to do two episodes on this, really double dip, but not a lot happened in both. <laughs> so I think just combining it into one, since they both released on the same night, that seems fair. That seems appropriate. And what we have with episode eight is a come full circle moment, uh, quite literally. The, the characters that are still alive, the few that are left, uh, they end up going in a circle and they end up back at their shoes where the road began. And the only people left on this journey are Agatha, Billy, and Jennifer. The episode starts pretty solid with Alice waking up, but not really, it's just her soul. She is in fact dead and she's gonna come face to face with death herself. Aubrey Plaza is back, it's nice to see her. She's easily one of the better characters in the show, but still hardly in this thing considering what a prominent character she's playing. She's gonna take Alice's hand and walk her to that great unknown beyond. And the rest of the episode's gonna prominently focus on Agatha and Billy, Jennifer's here and there a little bit, but they have to figure out their last challenge, which brings them underground in a morgue. And they have to figure out how to make something grow. They have to figure out how to create life from death. There's a lot of somewhat boring conversation that happens. I found myself a little annoyed by this episode because these are the final two, and it just feels like it's spinning its wheels to go somewhere. And unfortunately, when this thing winds down, it doesn't really go anywhere interesting at all. Ah, it's so hot. The big reveal in this episode is Agatha is actually the one that obstructed Jennifer's powers. I can't remember the term they used, but she, she's the one that essentially, for 100 years, kept Jennifer from being able to use her witch abilities. And this makes Billy realize that Agatha's trash and she's just an all around bad person. So naturally, he's gonna continuously forgive her and try to save her, along with Jennifer. Jennifer even says like, listen, uh, you guys are both bozos, but I'm gonna do the right thing here. Why? The right thing would be to leave them for dead. Well, at least Agatha, because she really is the worst. But no, time and time again, they keep helping this crazy bitch out. With the help of Billy, Jennifer gets her powers back. And she's really going to be one of the only survivors in this entire ordeal. Agatha lets Billy know that there is a way to bring back his brother, who's still soullessly wandering in the ether, but they need a body for him. So he kind of Game of Thrones-esque wargs around looking for a body that he can host his brother's soul in. And luck would have it, some kid's getting drowned in a nearby pool. 
I don't know if it worked. I'm honestly not even sure what the hell happened because he just disappears outright and Agatha's left by herself. It's at this point she's all but given up. She takes off her brooch. She looks inside the pendant and finds a hair, a lock of her son that she's going to rub all over her face and smell. It's a little weird. It's a little creepy. But then she realizes a teardrop has made its way onto the hair, which can be planted into the crack that was made by Billy throwing a fit. Aside, when Billy is looking for a ripe host, he's like, really into it, heavily panting, heavily breathing, and we're gonna get this a lot in the next two episodes from both him and Agatha. And now it's the only way I can achieve climax. Ah, uh, but no, she's gonna plant that hair into the ground, and wouldn't you know it, life springs eternal. A flower comes out, it changes a little bit, and she has passed the final test. Or has she? Because it turns out the witch's road is not all it's cracked up to be. And what greets her on the other side is not a prize that she's been seeking, which of course is to get her powers back, but it's that of that evil death. Rio's back, baby! And she's brought with her a lot of pain and a lot of anger towards Agatha. They are old flings after all. And they made a deal way back in the 1700s that we'll find out about in the final episode. But for now, we gotta fight a little bit. There's pink and purple energy blasts shooting this way and that. And truth be told, this scene started to go pretty hard. I was like, okay, finally we're getting something here. Agatha's getting cut up like crazy from glass getting blown at her. She's getting thrown across the yard. And then we went back into Nickelodeon Kids Presents Agatha all along as Billy flies back into the fray wearing the stupidest superhero costume I've seen in quite some... In, in some quite some time. Speaking of which, this is this is just getting absurd. <laughs> now we get some lame action. Rio gets thrown inside the house, which gives ample time for Agatha to finally get her powers back. Billy grants her that access. But she knows it's inevitable. You can't fight death. You can't cheat death. So she does the only honorable thing you could do. She offers up Billy, which is what death really wanted all along anyway, because Billy is not meant for this world. He found a cheat code and jumped into another body when he was supposed to jump into hell or wherever, he, the underworld or wherever they go. I have to hand it to Agatha. She managed to convince Billy to give himself up for the greater good. He does, which Agatha turns and goes, ha ha, I tricked you. See death, I'm the best. Take him, not me. Bye. But as she's walking away, Billy says to her, hey, Ags, is this what you did to your son? Is this what you did to your little boy too? Stops her dead in her goddamn tracks. She heel turns, walks over to Rio and plants a powerful kiss on those pouty lips. And Rio, Sonya bladed her ass. The kiss of death took Agatha down, toot sweet. And now Agatha's dead and comes back as a ghost, as all people do. I think that happened in episode eight. I don't know, a lot happened in episode eight, not much of anything happened in nine. Yeah, this is where we end on a massive cliffhanger. Billy heads back to his place. His parents berate him for being 24 hours late for dinner. He goes upstairs into his room and sees a giant collection of Wizard of Oz memorabilia. And that's when it finally clicks. Holy shit, the witch's road wasn't real until Billy made it real. He conjured the whole thing because just like his mom, Wanda, he has these abilities. Now, whether or not the Witch's Road was actually a physical place or just a place in your mind that he convinced the other ladies in the room of, I'm not really sure. I don't think it really matters. But regardless, he was responsible for killing a couple of them because he made them believe so hard that they were in actual peril. They ended up playing themselves. And there you have it, that's episode eight. Um, it was, it was all right. It was okay. It got a little slow in the middle. Some decent reveals. I liked the twist of the witch's row not being real. That worked out pretty well. There, there was some good, there was some good things here. Now episode nine, not so much my favorite. Uh, this was an episode that felt completely, and it felt more like an epilogue. This thing is getting really stuffy. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Unhook a little bit, unclasp the collar. <laughs> now in Casper form, tells Billy all about what took place and how she kind of knew it the whole time and he's stupid, but also awesome at the same time. It's, it's, it's complicated. But almost the entirety of this episode is gonna take place way back in the 1700s, watching Agatha roam the countryside with her newborn son, being a total garbage person. We get to see the birth of the child against a tree, while Death watches nearby hoping to claim that prize right away. But Agatha pleads with Death, just let me have my child. 
in which Death appropriately retorts, uh, he's living on borrowed time, okay? I'm gonna get him at some point, but uh, enjoy the time you have. And they do. They go from village to village, killing witches, claiming their powers, and moving on to the next one. But now that I think about it, this episode might be the best of the season, because the Witch's Road song is back. We've gone far too long without hearing that thing. And by far too long, I mean like one episode. But this one's gonna be about the origin of the song and of the tale of the Witch's Road and how Agatha would utilize this story to bring a small coven of witches together so that she could sucker a group of women together, collect their powers and leave them for dead. It's just easier than going to villages and having to do it. This way they come to her. And then they can go out into the woods for an afternoon, do a stupid ceremony, and then boom, she's got a bunch of good powers. But yeah, the kid is like walking next to her. Mama, Mama, I love being with you down this winding road, 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 road. And Agatha's like, what, what, what are you talking about? What are you singing, you idiot? But she likes it and she starts singing along with him. And next thing you know, the windy road becomes the witch's road. It's a whole thing. They're singing it all across the lands. Keep road and road and road and road and what? I know you've been loving this witch right here. We're walking late on the witch's road. Today is the greatest witch's road. Now witches come, witches go around that windy road. Some witches never come back, some come back for more. I got a witch in the hill with the road that spins, goes in and out, out and in, round and round again. Let's pour one out for Shifty. Subscribe for Crazy Town. Down, down, down that road. Down that fucking road. Down, down, down that road. Down that witch's road. Another witch bites the dust. Another witch bites the dust, and another one's gone, and another one's gone, another witch bites the dust, yeah. Here on this road, I am as witch as can be, ah na 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 witch's road, dang dang. Hey, we're on the witch's road. Na 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 I'm walking in the witch's road, leave a message and I'll call you back. Anyway, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Oh yeah, the, the rest of the episodes are really just these two building up the brand. Until one faithful night, the two are tuckered out. They take refuge under a tree next to a fire and that flame goes out to the little one. Agatha wakes up the next morning to find her son, cold, lifeless, lacking a pulse. Really all things described about me at one point or another. And so she's a little upset. She's a little pissed at uh, Rio about it. Never forgives her, never forgets. And that's why they have the relationship they do. A, a tattered love affair of sorts. Fast forward to present day. And we are back. She's been bothering Billy for that brooch back and he finally gives it to her. She's able to ghostly grab it and put it on. I'm not sure why she's a ghost, how she's a ghost. Uh, it's never explained. It, it doesn't, I mean, who who cares at this point with this show? But uh, yeah, she she has a little bit of peace that she has that. And she really tells him the real reason she's there. And that reason is she's scared to confront her son. It's an awkward family reunion. Hey, remember me, your mom, the, the one that traded you for a stick of gum or whatever she got out of the deal? Yeah, that would be awkward. That'd be uncomfortable. But Billy takes her hand because they're best friends because they have such a great rapport. Such a fantastic relationship full of memories of her tricking him into doing bad things, him killing people on her behalf. It's just, it's been a whirlwind of fun adventures, misadventures really. And so they're going to go on this journey together, find her child, make their amends, and... Who knows, maybe they'll end up like Vision, never heard of or seen again after this moment. As for the others, they're dead. Outside of Jennifer, who I, who I told you survived, she crawls herself out of the dirt and she Iron Man's away. A down that witch's road, 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 road. This is so freaking hot, oh my God. All right, that's Agatha all along. Eh, you know, not the worst thing ever, not great all the same. Look at, look at how I'm sweating like crazy. This is just, this was not worth it. But I wanna hear from you. Let me know if you watch this show, what your thoughts are overall with it. If you wanna see another season, if you wanna see more of these characters, 
like the video. Again, please subscribe just for the craft, just for the, the, the work, the punishment I'm allowing myself to endure for you. If you love what I'm doing, maybe give me a treat for Halloween and become a patron. At patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, I'm telling you, it's worth it. There are different tier levels, starting at just $1. That unlocks 300 exclusive videos. Plus, you're really helping out this one-man army, and it would, be, it would mean a lot. It would mean the world to me. Happy Halloween. This feels better.